So question number nine, a 32-year-old pregnant woman is in her 14th week of pregnancy. She's been seen in the urgent care centre as she's been told that there's an outbreak of whooping cough in her son's school. She's well and had all the recommended primary vaccinations as a child. She's concerned to know if she should take any action regarding whooping cough as she is pregnant. Which is the most appropriate action? One, no specific action. Two, she should receive a whooping cough vaccination routinely by the time she's 20 weeks of gestation and that's adequate. Three, she and her son should take a course of erythromycin now. Four, she and her son should have throat swabs taken to guide next steps. And five, obtain advice from an infectious disease specialist. Okay, so two is the answer that I'm looking for here. <clears throat> so just going over this a little bit. So whooping cough is one of those uh, diseases of childhood that has been reappearing. It's been a big increase in whooping cough this year. We've had a big increase in scarlet fever the previous winter, big increase in measles. You know, so a lot of these childhood infections have been more active recently. So what about a contact, somebody who's pregnant who has contact or may have had contact? Well, in general, generally speaking, it's not an area where we treat contacts whooping cough. It's not an area where we treat contacts. Whereas, for example, a pregnant woman in her third trimester with contact with a chickenpox case, we should test her immunity. And if she, she is not immune, then she should be treated with acyclovir. And of course, parvovirus B19, we'd be concerned about a contact, although we can't treat it. We would nevertheless check her immunity and follow her closely. What about whooping cough? Well, <clears throat> let's just go, let's just do a little bit of background on whooping cough. So this is a little bit about the recent rise in whooping cough cases. One of the issues here, so this is uh, published in June, is we've had a few deaths in infants, five deaths in infants, which are all preventable uh, this, this year uh, from whooping cough. It's something which is just really so, un so odd. We haven't, we haven't really had that as an issue for a while. And one of the problems is, is that if you look at the bottom here, it says that in London particularly, coverage of pregnant women with pertussis vaccination is very low. So you may not be familiar with this, but all women who are pregnant should be offered whooping cough vaccination by 20 weeks. And you might think, well, that's a bit strange. Why? Why are the women, the pregnant women, being given whooping cough vaccination? Well, the reason is, is because once they develop a, an immune reaction to that, they've probably been dosed anyway when they were a child. They'll get a, they'll get a brisk response. That IgG will cross the placenta and be in the baby when it's born. And that will protect the infant over its early months. And you get, I think it's 97% less whooping cough in the first three months of life when the mother has had a whooping cough vaccination during pregnancy. So it's really effective protection for the infant, not for the mother. Um, let's just say a few things about whooping cough. So whooping cough, bordetella pertussis, gram-negative coccus, uh, grows in, the, um, in the, the back of the nose, the nasopharynx. And basically when it begins, it's just like a cold. It just looks like a cold. But that's when it's infectious. And then after about a week or so, you start getting these attacks of coughing. It, the, this infection produces plugs in your bronchi and they make you cough and cough and cough and cough. And this is where the danger happens in very young babies because it can cause permanent damage to the bronchial system, causing bronchiectasis later, and even it can cause respiratory failure and death. So this is the dangerous phase. And it goes on for a long time up to six, even 10 weeks. 
And then after that, you have a convalescent phase where the, these attacks of cough, 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 inspiration causing a hoop, and then maybe vomiting, these get less during the convalescent phase, although they can be brought on again by another cough, you know, virus or something can bring back the attacks for months later. It's a pretty nasty illness. A typical person is going to be infectious for about two weeks. So you can stop them being infectious by giving them antibiotics, macrolides, erythromycin, clarithromycin, will stop the child being infectious. Otherwise, they're infectious for two weeks. You can't do that nationally, so it doesn't work as a way of managing the, this epidemic. But if you've got someone vulnerable in the home, you can do that. How do you confirm um, whooping cough? Well, the traditional way was with a swab sent right to the back of the nose called a per-nasal swab, a PNS, or a throat swab. Um, you can also do polymerase chain reaction, PCR on uh, samples from the back of the nose, etc. Or you can look for a serology arising in the IgG titer, so you have to have paired samples for that. I'm going to go on to one more subject, then we'll take a short break. And that is just about the whole question of notification. So if you have a childhood exanthem like whooping, a childhood illness like whooping cough, measles, mumps, rubella, all of those need to be notified. It's your duty as a doctor in the NHS to notify. And you don't need to wait for culture or confirmation. You notify on clinical grounds alone. You get a small fee, I think. You are duty-bound to notify, and you notify online. And so if you go online, this is, this is the basically you put in your details, a little bit about the, um, what you think the disease is, when it started, etc., and then details about the patient. This is one of those situations where we break confidentiality because we put in details about the patient address, etc., etc., and that is a duty that you have, whether or not the patient wants you to. It's your duty to give that information. So that's the notification system. There are some situations where, as well as doing the online notification, you have to phone through. And this goes to the local authority. The local government is called the Consultant in Communicable Disease Control, also traditionally known as the Proper Officer. Which is, you'll see that down the bottom here, proper officer. So this goes to your local government. You know, so for us, it would be where we are here, it would be Southwark, you know, or Lambeth, or whatever it might have to be, Tower Hamlets, whatever, wherever, you know, wherever it is in the country. They get this information. Uh, this is something from the, uh, the government, Public Health England, just a little bit about this. I'm not going to go through all of this, but it talks about how they want to be notified, of course, about notifiable diseases, and I'll just give you go through the list briefly in a moment. But also, they, 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 it says in the what to notify, they're also interested about chemical contaminations and other things that might be relevant, you know, to the population in, in general. So there's a little bit of information there about notifying, and then this list here, I'm going to zoom into that. What's on this list? Well, the way I think of it is childhood exanthems, except chickenpox. No chickenpox, but it's got the others there. So if you look through here, you should find measles is here, rubella is here, uh, mumps is here, um, whooping cough is here. All of those are here. Then foodborne things like so food poisoning up here, and then there are some other foodborne um, ones. And then after that, it's all imported diseases and the nasty diseases. So I think um, for strep, group A strep. Here it is, invasive group A strep. That's there. So if you see a list, that, that might help you. We'll be talking more about this next week. That if you, it's not an uncommon question to say which of the following is notifiable. Um, so just it's worth being aware of just some of how this is broken down because it's really hard just to remember it as a list. And you'll see on the right hand whether it's routine or urgent. So if it's routine green, scarlet fever, 
you just do the online notification. Leprosy, or my, not that we're going to pick that up in ED. But if it might affect other people, the population as a whole, then they call it urgent. You're supposed to pick up the phone and phone through to your find the number for your local authority, public health department, and phone through. Okay, I hope that's hope that makes sense. I think it's just worth being aware of that. Okay, so I'm going to take a stop there. We've got another, I think, about another eight more questions to do, which we'll do in about five minutes after a quick break while I just get a quick cup of tea.